<sighs> Timon Kolosinski is so good at cubing that sometimes I just sit around and think about that. Last weekend, the hopes and dreams of all aspiring future 3x3 world record holders were crushed when Timon Kolosinski got a 4.86 average of 5, absolutely destroying sub 5. Getting a sub 5 average is so difficult already, and think about the pressure to be the first sub 5 average ever, and Timon broke that by 0.22 seconds. See, I actually thought that was a lot, and I was going to tell you about how this hasn't happened in a long time, but turns out the last time Timon broke the world record, it was by 0.23. He's just really good at taking the record down a huge amount. But we need to talk about Timon pulling out a good performance, because this man may have just pulled out the greatest solve of all time. Before we get to that though, I want to show you what I said last year. When do you think the first sub 5 average will happen? I'm probably going to be so far off, but I think it'll be pretty soon. I'm going to guess August 2022, which is next year. Good job, Timon. You couldn't have delayed it by one weekend. Ugh, the thing that was the right answer, I should have guessed that. What was I thinking? I'm starting to see a trend here. Max Park breaks the world record by 0.01. Max Park breaks the world record by, well, 0.01 if you count the first time he broke it that day, he just broke it again the same day. It seems like Max Park is perfectly controlling his world records to the hundredth of a second in order to make it easier for him to break the world record the next time. Meanwhile, Timon is breaking the world record by over a fifth of a second each time because he's trying to stop Max Park, but it is inevitable and Max Park is going to get that 4.85 average very soon. No. Every time I feel like it's not going to happen this time and Max just does it again. I really feel like that's not going to happen, but we'll see. So I have a question for you guys. We just hit a sub 5 average and so I'm now wondering already, when are we going to hit a sub 4 average? And okay, we barely even have any sub 4 official solves, so it doesn't seem like it's possible or even nearly anytime soon, but it's 4.86 right now is the average. And once that gets down to 4.7, 4.6, 4.5, anyone who guessed it's never gonna happen is gonna start sweating. So leave your predictions in the comments of when you think a sub four three by three average is gonna happen. I don't even know how to guess this. I feel like no matter how I make this prediction, I'm gonna be so far off, but also I thought that for the last time I made the prediction and I almost got it. So I'm gonna say, 2029. All right, guys, everyone has to subscribe to the channel right now and stay tuned for every single video for the next seven years so you can see if this actually comes true. So congrats to Timon for the world record average, but also for having such incredibly smart solutions that he seems to be able to do faster and faster now that he's getting used to all these advanced techniques that he's using. We're going to go through all of his solves and see what he did. He's doing crazy stuff for X crosses. He's doing pseudo slotting. He gets seemingly world record on a miss scramble and has to do that again later. Like, oh my goodness, imagine how much pressure that would be. Okay, that's enough spoiler talk. Let's get into the solves. The first scramble here, done white top and green front, makes an easy blue cross. But we're gonna do a different scramble so it shows up as a white cross because I know some of you prefer following white cross. For this one, you just put white at the back where blue was, and if you do the scramble here, then you will end up with an easy white cross instead. We have the white cross almost done, just one move for three pieces, and we have this pair right here, which you can solve for an X cross in the start. See if you can figure it out before I show you. As a general rule, when you have a pair on top and a misoriented edge, you want to insert the pair first into its spot, because the misoriented edge can usually dodge the pair and just go in with it all preserved. Whenever your first step is easy, you want to look further. So in this case, we can track this corner and see what it does, and he notices that after D prime and then F prime, there's another F prime later and it comes right here, which perfectly pairs with this one. So that is the second pair. Yeah, so this was all done in nine moves, which is an insanely lucky start to F2L. Next, we have this pair and this pair, and you have to rotate for either one. This one has been here since the start, so you can actually figure this one out from inspection, and so he just does this one next because the other pair is not too great. So it's like this, and looking ahead to the other pair, which he solves the normal way. At this point, he does something really interesting to solve the last layer, and you'd think last layer is just algorithm algorithm, but actually sometimes it can get really deep. The normal way you could solve something like this is by doing OLL and then by doing PLL. But there is another way you can do it, which is by orienting the edges first, 
and then doing a ZBLL algorithm, which is when you have the cross done, you can just choose one algorithm that solves the rest all at once. But what Timon did was this. What? When you are recognizing the ZBLL case, you actually only need the corner pattern and you need to see a block somewhere. This is a very easy block obviously to recognize, but how would you predict it from this point? The way this edge orientation algorithm works is this color right here is going to come right here. So it's actually very easy to recognize that there will be a block here when you do this algorithm and you can see that it will just end up like that. This is already a trick I use a lot if uh, it was this OLL and I just recognize like that and I can see it's going to be an A perm, uh, but he's using it here for ZBLL as well, which is a great application of this technique. And after getting to this point, instead of doing the normal algorithm most people use, he does a different one, which is a little longer, but actually helps with a move cancellation. So to put it all together, he does this edge orientation algorithm, but instead of finishing it, he notices that he's actually partway through the other algorithm. So then he just continues on where that algorithm looks like it would have left off, which is crazy to think of in the middle of a 4.02 second solve. In the solve, he does this flawlessly, which is very impressive, but does not surprise me because we are gonna see some of the impressive stuff he does in the rest of these solves. For the second scramble, you can just do it white top, green front because Timon does the white cross. And we have two cross pieces pretty much solved. Uh, we have this and this. So this is again, a relatively easy cross, but look at that pair. One thing I find Timon is super good at that I am not good at at all is using wide moves to make finger tricks better. So the way he does this is like this and then a wide move to then put orange in from here. Of course, a U2 first to join this pair and make the X cross and then L2 for red. I am so bad at seeing how wide moves work. I mean, I do it more now after seeing a lot of Timon solutions and trying to be more like him, but the way I would have done a cross like this to avoid wide moves but still have good finger tricks is probably something like this. Which, I mean, that's not bad, but I think what Timon did was better. All right, what happens next? If you don't know what happened next, I want you to guess what happens next because I could not have guessed this in a million years. I'll even give you a hint. He solves the red green pair and the blue red pair at the same time. Okay, how does he do it? What he does is he rotates here and puts in this corner here like this. And this solves this corner and this edge. This is called solving pseudo pairs, which if you've seen Timon's solutions before, you should know that this is something he very often does. It's because these two are solved, which means these two make a pseudo pair. You can put them together and try and solve these at the same time. And that is already paired up with the moves he just did. Like these two were kind of already a pseudo pair, but uh, by inserting the red green corner, he kept them as a pseudo pair, which is quite a lot of foresight. And then he solves this in here at once. And remember, he's turning at like 10 turns per second when he does this. It's not exactly that he's whimsically moving the pieces around exactly how he wants to get them perfectly solved that impresses me. It's just that he's doing this so fast. Okay, then the next thing he does is solve this pair and this pair. There is a right way and a wrong way to do it. You put it here and you do R prime and then you do U because that leaves the edges oriented. If you do it, did it the other way, which I think is faster in general, uh, you end up with edges not oriented, and this is a terrible case. So he does this and then inserts it over here. Now, this part is pretty important. This looks like it's just an anti soon case, and in fact, I don't know why, like from here, he couldn't just recognize this and then solve the pair like this, because I think that might have been the best thing to do, but somehow he notices this, okay. If you come here and do you, then you end up with this block, this block, and this block. Now you don't need to see all three of them, but if you see any one of them, then it's probably a good idea to do lefty soon here instead because it preserves all three. So he does left soon here, which means he gets a very good PLL, a J perm, which uh, you can get like G perms and stuff if you don't do something like this. So that's very good foresight he had here to change up the algorithm he does. Now, Timon, for the second and third pair, the solution you did was very clever. I might say a little too clever for myself. I would have just done the red green pair like an idiot. And oh, look at that. It would have made this. And I can just do a pseudo pair for that. I mean, I totally would have realized that in a real solve. And 
uh, G perm. Okay, you're better. On the third solve, Timon does the white cross again, so we can just do the normal scramble. And again, we have a pair, and we have a pair, and we have two cross pieces almost in the right spot. This is insane, guys. This is insane how good these scrambles are. But you need to be very good to take advantage of all these things, and Timon is very good and does it perfectly. So the obvious part is U prime R2. Now, what this does is it makes the little block here to use this corner, but to use this corner, you also have to use the red green edge as well to make that full pair. So from here, you have to insert the red green edge into here. The quickest way to solve this red green edge into here is with L U2 L prime. Now you could do that now and you actually end up with nearly as good of a cross solution as what Timon got. All you have to do is insert blue next. So D and then put blue in here and then why do you to have this as your next pair? So right here, if you did LE to L prime to insert that, I would say great job, but Timon does something even better, which is D first. And then now you can do LU to L prime, but that also has the secondary purpose of moving this blue here ready to insert. So you can do LU to, before you do L prime, you just do this move like that. So you've basically inserted this blue in one move instead of three moves, which is slightly better. Then you get this, and this pair is already set up, and doing this one doesn't break that up. So he next inserts this pair into here, like this. And then this one and this one is next, so you two, and rotates this way. When you insert this, you can see this pair coming out. He does a rotation, and then instead of solving this the normal way, like this, which gives you a dot case on top. What he does instead from here is a ZBLS algorithm, which is an algorithm that solves the last pair and also gets you across on top because he knows ZBLL, so these can often be worth it. So it's kind of hard to explain, but I'll just show the algorithm from here. I can explain this part. R prime U2, R pairs these two. Yeah, but it's just an algorithm. What he does here actually is he does U2 and then recognizes the case from here. And then he does another U to begin. This is a ZBLL algorithm that starts with anti soon. And then once you do that, you just set up another soon for a skip. So you do U prime and then soon. So the top level cubing meta has a lot of ZBLL in it now. I do want to point out here though, that he does kind of recognize the OLL. Then he does a U2, then he recognizes the case. This solve could have been a little bit faster if it weren't for the double recognition here, but obviously with ZBLL, it's very hard to recognize from all angles. This is something that could have been improved in the solve and is something everyone should look out for. Not everyone's doing ZBLL, but for OLL or PLL, you also want to make sure you don't double recognize. For Timon's fourth solve, this is the scramble that he got. And I mentioned earlier he had to redo his fourth solve because this is not the correct scramble. Look at this pair. Look at these two opposite edges. Look at this pair. This looks really similar to the previous scramble. So if we actually compare it to the previous scramble, this is what it looks like. And yeah, it is almost just scramble three again, but slightly different. I mean, the cross was going to be very different because of the last cross piece being in different spots. So that's why the solve did end up going very differently. Now, even though this solve did not end up counting towards the world record average, it is the one that made Timon think he got it, and so did everyone else. And obviously there was a lot of pressure going into this solve, so let's just still see what he did, because, you know, seeing more of Timon's solutions is always a good thing. So again, you can try to figure out this X cross by yourself if you want, and also preserve this pair because he always ends up doing it. So how this one was done was D prime and then put blue in. And then now we have this one, but what he does is wide U prime and that attaches the green sensor to the green edge. And then now you can put it here and join it together right here and do L2 to solve that all, which still preserves this pair and you can put that in next. Now, the only difference between this scramble and the last scramble was where the blue edge piece started, but he still did it so differently, which goes to show how clever you have to be on each individual scramble. Even when there's a slight difference, it changes everything. This next part, I'm not entirely sure what the thinking was, but I can kind of get it because of what I saw in a previous solve. So what he does here is he takes this one and pairs it with this one. I, I think that's what he's doing. He does R U R prime, like that's not good for this case, I think. Yeah, anyway, I don't know if he knew this edge was solved because he kind of like hesitated here, but then he did U2 and I saw his ring finger was like kind of hesitant on like ready to do D prime. I think he might've been trying to do D prime and then solve these two. 
maybe. But anyway, what he ended up doing was just do R U to R prime here, which solves the corner. And now we have this pseudo pair solved and we can solve this one. So just D prime and insert this. This is like almost the same moves as something he did earlier. So that's why I understand part of it. Uh, I don't know why he did it that way, but that's just how he did it. And it was probably better than what I would have done. Next, we have this OLL and it can help you predict that this block is gonna be preserved on the left side. And then the J A perm again. And this time there is no AUF, this block moves to the left. So you can remember that if there is a no AUF case for this particular way of doing J A perm, then you can end it like this, R, and instead of doing L, you can just do this for a wide R. And if you do it that way, it makes the finish much smoother. Here is the fifth scramble, but not the last solve he did because average of fives nowadays need six solves. So here, if you look around, none of the crosses are really great. We have this on green, but then these two are really bad. He does the white cross, and I don't know if he just thought the white cross would be good or if he just defaults to white when none of the other colors are good. At least that's what I do because when everything looks bad, there's really no point wasting your time looking for the best one because starting to figure out just any color is actually the best use of your time. But then he finds an X cross, so... Oh well, good job, Timon. How unexpected. What he does first is set up blue and red here so they can be solved relative to each other like that, but doesn't do that yet. Next, he solves orange and then does D. And instead of just doing the cross, he inserts some extra moves in here. He first does blue and red, which takes out the red green corner. Here's the red green edge, which he will then put in with the green cross piece with an extra U move like that. So, so far he's used one extra move in his cross. Now he's gonna use another extra few moves, one, two, three, four, to insert this corner. So he's done five extra moves to solve this pair and five moves for a pair is really good. So there is your X cross. I would never have seen that. Next, we have this pair and this pair visible. I don't know how he saw this one first. Maybe he planned it or saw it during inspection or the cross, but he rotates and does this. And then we have this one and this one, which you can solve like this, and then rotate and insert. Now, this pair is really kind of, I was gonna say good, but it's not good. It's kind of okay when you have one cross piece oriented only, because then you can put it here and solve the rest of the cross with a pretty okay algorithm, which is like this. And then insert. All right, next he gets a ZBLL case. We have gone through most of his solves and I still don't have a moment where I have thought of anything better than Timon, so here it is. This is the ZBLL algorithm from here and I totally know it, I'm not just reading it off screen. The way that Timon does this, R, U, R prime, U, all with the right hand, and then regrip for F2. Uh-oh, wee -oo, wee -oo, regrip police. Um, actually, Timon, on your fourth move, you can do this to regrip at the same time. I am better than Timon, confirmed. Ah, yes. Next, we have the sixth solve of this average of five because his fourth solve was a misscramble and once they checked over the footage, they had to have him redo his fourth solve on a different scramble. When he was actually on his fourth solve, he needed to get a sub five time, which yeah, that's really tough, but you get two tries to do it. Then he thought he got it. Then he got the worst solve of the average on his last solve. And since the best and worst don't count, then that doesn't really matter. But now it does matter because now, since you're replacing the fourth solve only, you only get one more shot. People are already calling this the greatest solve of all time. Look at everyone. No one's solving anymore. Everyone's done. This is after the round is over and everyone's just watching him do this one solve to see if he can get world record. I don't think something like this has ever happened in cubing and honestly, the fact that he got such a good solve blows my mind. You know, when I tried this scramble for the first time, I actually thought I came up with something pretty clever. So if we're going for the white cross, orange and green, so we're gonna do D prime and then insert them both. And then red is stuck back here, but we can do it like this. So my hand wasn't this grip. I can do D prime and then put this one in, D prime, insert this corner because that one solved, aha, X cross. But I don't just end there, but I also take out this one to make that as well. All planned in inspection, whoa. And then we have these two easy, look ahead to these two and then uh, like this and then skip OLL and then G perm. I got like seven seconds. I was feeling all good about myself. And then I read Timon's solution. Timon actually does something smarter, but also way simpler than what I did. So what he does is the same start. He'll insert these cross pieces. Red is still back here, D. 
Now, instead of doing all that stuff I did in the beginning, which honestly may not have been worth it to uh, make this into an X cross, uh, what he just does is takes this red one and puts it right in here, but he saw the orange-blue pair. So he doesn't even worry about this X cross because you can just have a free pair in one move, which is like usually better than an X cross. And how this one works is you're gonna do R2, F, R2. Now the problem with that is it takes this corner and puts it here. That is not good because this edge is not in a setup spot, but if we just do U2 first, then the edge will be in the right spot. Now you can do R2, F, R2, and you have the orange-blue pair set up and rotationless. And before we even insert this orange-blue pair, look at what he created. I don't know how that happened, but somehow he made that happen. And then now, so we have this free pair, but wait, no, he didn't actually know that that happened because he did this one next. I think he did it, yeah, he did it like this. Okay, but then this free pair happens and it doesn't matter in the end anyway. And of course, it was all planned to be the best in the end because when you insert this pair like this and you can insert it here with a sledgehammer and you get all the edges oriented so you can just go into a soon. And then of course he gets a great PLL, the T firm. One thing I do want to check out though is he did, after solving this pair, have a free pair. I just want to see what would have happened. Okay, so he has another free pair, and then we have this. Well, okay, you can you can do your ZBLL shenanigans here, right, Timon? Is that ZBLL good? I don't know. I don't know ZBLL. Well, maybe it's not. What about this ZBLL, Timon? Is this one good? Either way, with all the free pairs, that solve might have been better. I want you guys to look at how fluid this solve was. Just look at the whole thing. There's no pauses, even in OLL and PLL. So it ends up being a 4.56, which gives Timon a 4.86 average of 5. And this breaks the old world record of 5.08 by an insane amount, absolutely tearing into sub-5 territory. Actually, let me know in the comments if this average is faster than the world record single solve from when you started cubing. That really puts into perspective how far cubing has come. And I don't want to admit it, but this is getting awfully close to my personal best single solve at home of 4.61, and I will be officially completely washed up once that happens.